Mike Bodaniels, Chuck Scoville, along with me here in the booth at High Hat at Southwood High School. Dr. Don on camera tonight as we get set to see the Shelby Valley Wildcats tangle with the South Floyd Raiders here on South Floyd's field. Brand new uh, grass out on the field. Uh, Chuck looks very nice here at South Floyd. <laughs> Yeah, I talked to some folks earlier in the summer, and they said they planted the wrong kind of grass last year, Bo, and a lot of it died, and then we had all that cold weather and rain, so they just came out here with rototillers, ripped it all up, and put brand new sod down, and it looks wonderful. A big crowd on a Friday night here. As folks are still coming in, though, so we expect a bigger crowd as the night continues. There's two games here tonight. We'll be doing the first game, uh, South Floyd and uh, Shelby Valley in the first game, and... Uh, it is uh, Pike Central scheduled to play Frankfurt in the second game tonight. Of course, this game on WPRG Channel 5, your uh, Intermountain Cable Station. And uh, Shelby Valley will uh, begin on offense here as we get underway tonight. Uh, the uh, South Florida Raiders will be kicking off to the Wildcats, who we saw in the Pike County Bowl, Chuck, and look very good. Love their passing game, and uh, we'll see tonight what they do against South Floyd. Of course, they won easily uh, last weekend. Yeah, I think these two teams match up fairly well, at least on paper. Uh, South Floyd traveled down the road last weekend, lost a heartbreaker in overtime, 27 to 26 to Powell County, and uh, Powell County, uh, if folks remember, played Prestonsburg uh, a couple of years ago up here in the playoffs. That was the year Prestonsburg ended up on the carpet in Louisville. So uh, South Floyd did pretty well against uh, Powell County. They held their own. Uh, Shelby Valley rolled over Phelps. I think it was 46 to 6 last weekend. And I think this will be a little bit uh, sterner test for the Wildcats this evening. Just about set to go. This is called a Shorty Jamerson Classic here at South Floyd High School. And it will be uh, Brandon Little that will kick off. Brendan Little. As he will kick off to Shelby Valley. Back there deep is Zach Mullins, one of the return men for the Wildcats. And we'll pick him up as the game progresses. It's a short one, taken around the 25-yard line. Out to the 30, to the 35. Bouncing outside to the 40, the 45. Near the 50-yard line on the return. I believe that was uh, Jeremiah Dameron, number 32. Right you are. Good return on a short kick there in Shelby Valley with great field position to start this game. So Shelby Valley now will open up on offense. As we are just underway from South Floyd High School, the 48-yard line. Griffin, the quarterback, did a great job. The MVP last week for Shelby Valley in that game. We saw Branham also out there uh, catching quite a few passes. They open from the wishbone. It goes to the left side to the South Floyd 45-yard line. Just a straight uh, forward play right up the middle with the Jeremiah Dameron on the carry from the first play. Yeah, Shelby Valley looked good in the trenches last week. They went over, around, and through Phelps, and their line played a major role in that big win. Left side, it goes to Wyatt this time. Wyatt is tripped up at the South Floyd 42-yard line, looks like. That'll be good enough for the first down, so they'll move the sticks. They'll mark it on the 41. First and 10, Shelby Valley. This first series of Good hold on the left side, Wyatt. So from the 41. Griffin under center from the wishbone. They give and to the 30. It looks like he is gone. We're talking about Mullins. He'll take it in from 41 yards. So the first score of the night, a huge hole. And Shelby Valley scores. Give him six from 41 yards away. It is six to nothing. To go 53 yards, Zach Mullins, as he took it the last 41 yards, and Shelby Valley. So Mullins yeah. getting a lot of work early in the game for Shelby Valley. Two nice runs, especially that one. You don't get much nicer than a 41-yard touchdown run. It'll be uh, Johnson in to kick the extra point. John Johnson. The holder is Griffin. The extra point try. The kick is up. Looks like it might have missed off to the left. And it did. It remains at six to nothing in score. 11 3 left to play in the first quarter. Back after this break on the Inner Mountain Sports Network. Back 
back once again in South Floyd. Shelby Valley has taken a lead of six to nothing. The 41 yard touchdown. Zach Mullen scoring. Extra point no good. And Shelby Valley now will kick off. Josh Johnson kicking off for the Wildcats. A short one bouncing around the 30 yard line. Picked up at about the 25. Back up the field. And uh, out uh, to the 20. And then that is it as uh, Brendan Little takes it up on the bounce. Goes laterally across the field. And South Floyd will have it around the 20 yard line. Jared Branham, number 27, one of the Shelby Valley players hustling down to stop a little right there on the 20. Actually, the 25-yard line, Chuck. I led you astray there. It's the 25 and not the 20, so they'll start from the 25, first and 10. At the quarterback, Landon Hall. Brandon Little in the backfield. Along with Hall, we've got him bunch close. It goes to Little out to the 30-yard line. Brandon Little for uh, about five yards, a big pile up around the 30-yard uh, line. In there on the tackle for Shelby Valley is Ryan Hicks, and also in there for the Wildcats, Zach Mullins, as they pick up about six yards. Brandon Little had a whale of a game against Powell County last week, rushed for over 200 yards in that ball game. Robert Mullins goes 208, one guard, the other guard, many taking only 188 pounds. The tackles, Chris Hall, 280 pounds. 31-yard line. Second down and four for South Floyd. Three backs lined up behind their quarterback. It comes to the left side. Out to the 35 to about uh, the 39 yard line. Little on the carry. He's got enough for the first down. They'll mark it a uh, little bit further back. I believe they'll put it down. Well, it's between the 38 and the 39. We'll go ahead and call it the 39 yard line. First down. Brandon Little going to be the workhorse for South Floyd this year. Last year he shared that backfield duty with uh, Josh McRae who graduated and both of them figured in about 80% of the offense last year. So we've got a Brandon Little and a Brendan Little for uh, South Floyd. It comes again to the left side, bouncing out to the 40 and corralled. Well, I'll tell you that Zach Mullins has been in on uh, so many plays that time defensively. He made the tackle, Brandon Little on the carry. And we'll see what the spot is uh, put down around the 42-yard line. They'll pick up about three. I'll tell you, folks, that was supposed to be a 20-25-yard pickup. What I mean, Zach Mullins able to do. Nine twenty-nine left here in the first quarter. Shelby Valley up six to nothing. As Landon Hall comes to the sideline, gets a play from Donnie Daniels, the head coach here at South Floyd. He had the sideline. Let me tell you. 42, second down. Seven yards to pick up for the first. South Floyd Raiders. And the snap goes to the right side, to the 45, and to the 50-yard line. Into South uh, Shelby Valley territory, down to about the 48. It is Brandon Little on the carry. So uh, another first down for South Floyd. I like the way he runs. He keeps those legs churning until the whistle blows and sometimes after. Keeping it on the ground, South Floyd, as they move the sticks again, another first down. It's at the 49 in Wildcat territory now. They'll line up again. Landon Hall, the quarterback. Brendan Little in the backfield, and Brandon Little in the backfield for South Floyd. Little flinch there, and we're going to get... Uh, some movement on the Raiders. That'll move them back five yards. Illegal procedure. That'll move the ball back to the 46-yard uh, line in South Floyd territory now. By the way, that uh, drive for Shelby Valley, if you can call it that, four plays. They took it. Uh, 52 yards for the touchdown, 57 seconds. The Mullins run from 41. Six to nothing. Here's the snap. And it comes to the left side. Got some room to run to the 40 of the 35 spinning down to the 27 yard line. A nice run as Wesley Hall finds an opening on the left side, Chuck. Yeah, he normally lines up in that 
slot position out there on the tee and uh, showed some good quickness to the outside. Got a fine block that sprung him loose. Let's see if I can get that guy's number. I think it was 74. Chris Hall maybe doing that big block for him that sprung him for the extra yardage. 27 yard line, first and 10, South Floyd. Looks like Parker and Hicks are coming in for Chevy Valley. Brandon Little. And it goes inside this time, inside the 25 yard line. Tackle made by Kevin Harper down there, along with Earl Collier. The guy played on uh, for a uh, relatively short game, and it'll be Wesley Hall. Down and uh, probably about uh, six, maybe seven for South Raiders. South Floyd Raiders with seven and a half minutes left to go. Wesley in the first period. lost. Valley on top six nothing. Mike Central and Frankfurt will be next uh, as far as this game is concerned. Of course, well, they uh, they actually picked up about uh, close to four yards. It'll be second down. Coming up now, second down and six coming up. Man in motion for the Raiders. The pitch comes to the left side, breaking a tackle, getting inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line. Brandon Little on the carry. Nice uh, spin there to uh, break away from a Shelby Valley tackler. And picking up another first down. They'll move the sticks again all the way down to the 16-yard line. So uh, now South Floyd on the move, Chuck. Looking good. Both lines, at least on offense, opening some holes for these running backs early. Landon Hall bringing in the play for the side. 7.04 remaining in the first quarter. We've got a timeout called on the field. Six to nothing, Shelby Valley, South Floyd on the move. We'll return after this break on the Intermountain Sports Network. Well, it is on the 16-yard line right now. South Floyd moving with the ball. They began on their 25-yard line. They marched it down to the Shelby Valley 16, first and uh, 10 now for the Raiders. And the red zone, keeping it on the ground, down the field, very successful right now. It will come to the second man, and he gets uh, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Wesley Hall on the carry. Uh, on the tackle, Jeremiah Dameron, amongst others. Hall, oh, not quite as big a back as Little is, and he needs a little, little bit bigger block than what he got because he didn't get much yardage there. He got smacked right at the line of scrimmage. About a half a yard, I guess, uh, is what they picked up there. We'll call it second and nine. Just inside the 16-yard line. Second down and 10. Landon Hall under center, split backs, takes a snap, and he gives a little bit of a hold on the right side down to about the 10-yard line. Joe Osborne on his first carry of the night. And that'll bring up third down and maybe one. So Osborne gets in on the offense. Third down coming up. Close to three yards. Call it the nine. 5.54 left here in the first quarter. Shelby Valley up on top early, but South Floyd marching to tie it here. Under center is Hall. And needing three yards, spinning and uh, turning down to near the six-yard line. Brandon Little, we'll see where the mark is. Needed three. Let's see if he got it. They may have to measure this. I'm not going to guess. It looks awful close. At official timeout, that is exactly what uh, they'll do here is bring out the sticks and see how close he is. It'll either be a first down or fourth down and very, very short, just a few inches. Here come the sticks. Well, right now, uh, the weather looks pretty good, Bo. When I first left the house this afternoon, it was looking pretty foreboding. It was pouring rain and lightning and thundering, but uh, it looks like it's blowing over, so hopefully we'll be able to get this game in without any lightning delays this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I left the station this afternoon to put my 
Sunglasses on, headed up toward Pikeville. Uh, Sonny and Harold pouring the rain at Pikeville. I took them off. Time I got back down toward Harold, it was sunny again. So uh, what uh, that man, Dr. Don, on the roof calls those pop-up thunderstorms, I guess. You'll get them uh, in little spots around the area. This type of weather, the summertime, very warm. And it is warm. Forecast yesterday said uh, it's at 84 degrees. I think it ended up about 91 or two. So they missed it a bit. It's been a hot one again today. They'll probably be giving these kids several breaks during the ball game because it is awfully humid out tonight. Well, call it fourth and one as uh, they fall just a little bit short of the first down, although they only need about six inches here. Down at the six yard line, South Florida, big play for both teams. Shelby Valley defensively trying to stop them. The Raiders on fourth down. South Florida, of course, they've been driving. Uh, they drove 69 yards so far on this march. As Hall is under center and uh, he's not going to get it, I don't think. Pushed by Shelby Valley. I don't, uh, I don't know. Let's see if. Where the forward progress will be, according to the spot by the official. Well, looks like it's spotted just inside the six this time, and the ball's nose was just outside the six when they measured. So uh, the forward progress gives uh, South Floyd the first down. They only needed uh, about a half a foot. Boy, Earl Collier was the mountain of a man in the middle of the line there he hit little and stood him up and drove him back but little got those six or eight inches that he needed good defensive surge there by shelby valley south boy though getting just enough as they continue the drive just inside the six yard line it comes to the left side plenty of room touchdown give him six wesley hall takes it in from Six yards out for the six points and uh, south Floyd on the board it's all tied up six apiece here Six yard run by Wesley Hall and it's six apiece as we await the extra point try for South Floyd. 4.51 left to play in the first quarter. That score coming. Looks like South Floyd will uh, go for the two here. They'll send Justin Sloan out to the right side. Here's a wide out in this set. Uh, Landon Hall under uh, center. And it's a pitch coming to the left side, cutting it back in toward the goal line. And let's see. Good. They said he made it across. He got hit right at the line, but that ball must have nudged over. And who uh, didn't quite pick up the number? Who was that, uh, Chuck, that uh, scored the touchdown? Was that uh, number 12? That looks like, uh, I guess it was. Yeah, Brandon Little yeah. with the conversion there. Got his jersey kind of twisted around there. Uh, Brandon Little with the two-point conversion. That puts <laughs> South Floyd up 8-6 to six in this game. We'll be back on the Ed Mountain Sports Network. Hello. Yes. Back once again, it's South Floyd. It's eight to six now. South Floyd has taken the lead. They marched 75 yards down the field on 10 plays. It took them four minutes and 50. Uh, we tried it again. It came with 4.51 left of the quarter. 6.11 is what they uh, took off the clock marching down the field. We get the squib kick, take it around uh, the uh, 30, out to the 35, to the 40. Dameron on the return, still on his feet, and then goes down at around the 42-yard line. One of those in there, Adam Tackett on uh, the tackle for South Floyd. 42-yard line, that's where they'll start this drive. Shelby Valley with the other uh, good return by Dameron, who takes it on the hop. And once again, Shelby Valley with pretty good field position. Yeah, South Floyd seems to be content just to kind of pooch kick the ball on the kickoffs. So Shelby Valley, each time they get the ball, is going to have pretty good field position, it looks like. 42-yard line, wishbone, left side it goes, and uh, to the 45-yard line on the carry. Joseph Wyatt. They'll uh, mark.
mark it about, uh, well, a couple yards anyway, out to the 40, 44 yard line. It'll be second and eight coming up. So once again, the South Floyd drive, 75 yards, 10 plays, took uh, six minutes and 11 seconds to score. The touchdown run by Wesley Hall. It is Griffin giving it to the left side or the right side, rather, across midfield to the 48 yard line. The tackle made, T.J. Hall. But uh, he's not a yard short. Yeah, he got a good spot. They got the first down, Bo. Well, I said a yard short. I was looking at the marker across the way. The official had not made the indication, and then, then he did. It said uh, first down when he made it. So. South Floyd defensively Shelby Valley beginning their drive from the wishbone 48 yard line for the Raiders Mullins getting away down to the 40 he was grabbed around the ankles by Landon Hall and uh, good chunk picked up about uh, almost eight yards down to the 41 yard line and we uh, I was afraid to say I was thinking about this game afraid to say well, I think it's going to be a good matchup. I think it's going to be a good game because we had some <laughs> lousy ones last weekend. I've quit trying to analyze and, and predict these ball games after what happened last weekend. And right now, it does look like it's going to be a good one. Shelby Valley, a first down around the left side. Could be going into the end zone. And we've got six more put on by the Wildcats. That is Joseph Wyatt who takes it in from 41 yards away. Another 41 yard touchdown run. Wyatt this time, 302 remaining in the quarter. So that didn't, <laughs> didn't take very long, Chuck. Once again, Shelby Valley on the board. Wyatt's got such good quickness. If he springs to the outside, he's gonna be big trouble because uh, he can outrun just about anybody in the mountains. I believe Shelby Valley will go for the two here since they missed the extra point earlier. And they're down right now. Well, actually, they're up, but uh, of course, this would put them up. And it goes to the right side. No good. It would have put them uh, up by six, 14. Uh, to eight, but it did not happen as they failed to get the uh, two point conversion. So it remains at 12 to eight. We'll be back after this break on the Inner Mountain Sports Network. First quarter, Chevy Valley 12, South Point 8. We'll be back in with the kickoff in 60 seconds on the NKB Sports Network. <laughs> And back once again, Shelby Valley goes uh, 58 yards on four plays. They took a minute 42 off the board. 41 yard touchdown, Joseph Wyatt, 12 to eight. The extra point no good as they went for two. And uh, the kickoff now, taken around the 15 yard line, out to the 20, to the 25 on the right side, to the 30 yard line. There's a flying around the 25. So no doubt that'll cost uh, South Floyd some yards on the return. Adam Tackett on the return there for the Raiders. Two fifty left to play here in the first quarter. Is uh, we've already had three scores: two by the Wildcats and one by South Floyd. And, and this could be one of those shootouts. And if it is. Could uh, get very exciting before this game is done. We've already seen some offense from both teams. And now South Floyd will be their turn, but they'll not have the uh, good field position once they did drive it uh, 75 yards on uh, the scoring drive. But uh, this time, as uh, the flag came down around the 25, we'll see where the mark will place it here. Still stepping it off down to the 16 yard line. That's where. Uh, the Raiders will have to start. Not got an indication, probably a hold there after a 10 yard penalty. Yep. Yep. 
Head over on the right side. We'll see how we got. So the Raiders now. Let me get a number there. This time they'll have to take it 84 yards if they put points on the board on this trip down the field. We saw uh, they moved the ball uh, earlier and uh, Shelby Valley unable to uh, do anything defensively to stop the drive. Under center is Landon Hall. He'll take it and he'll throw it. He's got a man. Nope. He's not going to get the pass away. The ball was knocked away and uh, it's incomplete, they say. Justin Sloan, I believe it was, that uh, definitely had a step or two on the defense there. A little bit of luck there for South Floyd. They said his arm was going forward because he got popped and the ball came out. Very close to a fumble. Shelby Valley's got three big kids right on that defensive front, and they're tying up the linemen and allowing the linebackers and the cornerbacks to fill the gaps. Second and ten, it comes to the left side, to the uh, 15, to the 20-yard line. About a four-yard pickup. Wesley Hall. At the 20 yard line. It'll be third down and a say a long six. Third down coming up, 225 left to play over here in uh, the first quarter. Here's Core. It's 12 to 8 as Shelby Valley scored twice, missed a couple of extra points, missed a kick on the opening touchdown, missed a two point conversion attempt. South Floyd driving down the field, scoring their touchdown and getting their two point uh, conversion attempt. It's 12 to 8 here. As, uh, they line up now from the shotgun. South Floyd. Hall takes the snap. Dumps it off to the right side. Complete to the 20. Slants inside. Out to the 30. And across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. A gentleman, uh, Zach Mullins, has been in on a lot of plays on both sides. Defensively and offensively makes the tackle. And that'll be another first down for South Floyd. Operating this time from the shotgun as uh, they dump off the pass. Justin Sloan sliding back in toward the middle of the field. Got it out to the 31 to pick up of 11 yards. This time, uh, Landon Hall will go up under center. First man very quickly into the line, out to the 32-yard line. Chris Tackett on the tackle. And also down there, Earl Collier, who plugs up the middle very well. Brandon Little. Uh, the carry for uh, South Floyd picking up about two yards. We'll call it second and eight. Down to 55 seconds here in the first quarter. South Floyd, sunny, nice day. According to where you are, could it be reading where you are. We were talking about that earlier, of course, when you see this on TV. It'll be later. This game starting at 6.30 in the evening. The pitch. Come to the left side, out to the 40, and to the 45-yard line. Well, no, wait a minute. wait just a minute here. Let's see what the mark is. Not quite the 45-yard line. Stopped across the 40, though, and another first down for South Floyd. I think that's the way that for South Floyd to go in this ball game. Bo uh, Shelby Valley, those three kids in the middle average out about 285, 290, and uh, they're just kind of stopping them in the middle of the field. So South Floyd's trying to go outside and they're finding better running room to the outside. It's on the 42, first down South Floyd is once again, the, the Raiders move the sticks. Continuing to uh, march down the field. They began on the 16, right side this time. And out to the 45. <laughs> Big pile up out there. Hard to tell who makes uh, these tackles because there's such a big pile up of blue and, and the light jerseys of South Floyd. Finally, they get them unstacked. Wesley Hall, the uh, gentleman that carried the ball, and uh, that's the end of the first quarter. 12 to 8. A score is Shelby Valley. We'll be back with the second quarter after this on the Intermountain Sports Network. Thank you. 
What would she call their... Well, eight. Forward, eight. Second and eight. 45-yard 45 45 line. South Floyd Raiders. Second down coming up. And eight yards to go for the first down. The snap and the give to the left side to midfield. Down to the 47. That'll be another first down for South Floyd. Brandon Little on the carry for the Raiders. Uh, blocking out in front, Dustin Moore, the 275-pound junior, looking at this roster. It wasn't a big team. I didn't know it was Dustin Moore, 275 pounds, but one of very few that uh, will go at that uh, weight. Jeffrey Martin at 255, 280 is uh, Chris Hall. And that's about it. And the big team of South Floyd, but they've shown some quickness here today, Chuck. Yeah, they can break it to the outside, and um, the backs have got a quick first step. If there's a little bit of a crease, they've been finding some yardage in the middle, even though Shelby Valley's got those huge defensive linemen in front of them. The eighth play of this drive, a quick hitter into the line and bursting outside to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Oh, what a stiff arm. And loses the football at the goal line. It's loose and goes out of the end zone. Wow, it'll be Shelby Valley's ball as it goes out of the end zone. Wow, what a run and, and what a tough break at the end of that run. Shelby Valley's ball at the 20-yard line as he took it 46 yards and fumbled the ball right near the goal line. It rolls out of the end zone. The Wildcats will go on offense now. <laughs> They'll have it, uh, I said the 20-yard line, strike that. It'll be right where the fumble. Oh, wait a minute. It went out of the end zone. It will be the 20-yard line. Let me crack myself again. It should be, should be the 20-yard line as the ball went out of the end zone before anybody could hop on top of it, so they'll get it on the 20. That was just a great stiff arm by Brandon Little, but in doing so and keeping Wyatt from making the tackle, uh, he lost the football there heading for the end zone. What a tough break. Wow. Looked like uh, South Floyd was going to put another touchdown on the board. Did not happen. Inside it comes to the 25 and uh, bowling his way out to the 30 yard line. It comes Zach Mullins. Pick up of 10. That'll move the sticks just like that. A first down on the first play from the line of scrimmage. Could have been more. He broke two or three tackles there. Robert Mullins, number 52, finally corralled him. 30-yard line, first and 10, Shelby Valley. Griffin under center, wishbone. Here's the snap, second man, and spinning out to the 34-yard uh, line. Joseph White getting up after that play, picking up about four. Close to the 35. Second down and six coming up for the Wildcats. Near the 35. Once again, the wishbone, Griffin under center, takes the snap, the give to the right side, and flag comes in as Zach Mullins gets out to the 39. The flag comes over top of the defense and into the pile. We'll see what the call is going to be. Holding against the Wildcats. We'll get the mark after the penalty here. Know about you, Chuck? My first trip to South Floyd High School here, and uh, seen South Floyd play quite a bit down through the years, but never been here to their home field. Now, I guess Don and I have done a number of games over the years at the old Bracket Field, uh, homecoming and things like that, and uh, had a couple of three ball games over here last year. But this is the best this field has ever looked. Out to the 27-yard line as they moved it back after the penalty. And the pitch, trying to cut it around the right side, and good defense by Shelby Valley. And uh, 
I believe that was 82, wasn't it? Uh, no, it could have been 82. There's no 82 on the roster. At least, uh, at least we don't have an 82. It uh, very likely was uh, Justin Sloan. Could have been uh, 83, I guess it was over there. But a nice defensive uh, play there as uh, it comes back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. They try to pitch around the right side to Joseph Wyatt. No room over there. Wishbone formation. Griffin wants to throw. Got a man out there and drew it kind of behind him. It's incomplete. Spinning around trying to make the catch is Chris Tackett and unable to uh, come up with the football. And he was open out there. Yeah, he was waiting on it, then had to kind of got turned around. Did about a 180 trying to come back to the ball and just lost his concentration in doing so. Would have been a big first down for Shelby Valley on the pass, and we saw that happen quite a bit against Phelps at uh, Griffin. Hit uh, that man that out there. Uh, several passes, caught a couple of touchdown passes. Osborne back deep and a whistle as the play is called before the punt. We'll probably have uh, no, see uh, what the call is going to be here by the official. We'll get the indication. Offside South Florida. That'll move it up five. Third penalty on the Raiders, totaling 20 yards so far in this first half. So the five yard penalty. Once again, checking the return. Raiders, Adam Tackett and uh, Osborne back there. <laughs> Here's the punt. And taking up the 33. Making some nice moves. Bouncing outside to the 40. That is Osborne to the 50. And down to the Shelby Valley 45. So South Floyd will have a great field position. Joe Osborne on the return. For the Raiders. Osborne, one of the new guys in the South Floyd backfield this year. They've got him listed at fullback, but he only goes 156 pounds. That time he had a nice run on that punt return. Great shape for the Raiders here. A trail 12 to 8. Once again earlier, a tough break as they looked like they were going to score a touchdown, fumble the ball on the one yard line. Nobody was able to come up with it before it rolled out of the end zone and Shelby Valley got the ball on the 20. But uh, after the incomplete pass on third down, uh, South Floyd gets the punt and a nice return by Osborne. And here they are on the 45 yard line. A snap and it goes to the left side, trying to find room over there. A little extra pushing and shoving on that left side of the line. Nothing happening on that play. Good defense by the Wildcats. I think that was Osborne. He got maybe a yard. So they begin here on the 45. 8.37 left to play. Here in the second quarter. Ball now on the 44. Second and nine coming up for the Raiders. Landon Hall under center. One back lined up behind him. Man in motion now. And it goes to the motion man. That is Osborne once again. Down to the uh, 35, near the 30-yard line, knocked out of bounds. So little Joe getting some uh, time on offense here, making some nice carries. Picks up the first down for South Floyd. They'll mark it on the 32. 14-yard pickup, Chuck. Osborne's look good in there tonight, and South Floyd kind of doing what Shelby Valley is. Uh, I'm sure Wyatt's considered the feature back for Shelby Valley and uh, a little the feature back for South Floyd, but they're mixing things up on both, both sides, and the other backs have done real well. From the 32, and a quick hitter down to the 20, still on his feet to the 15, some high tackling. Knocked down at the 15-yard line, Wesley Hall on the carry. And he picks up another 17 yards for the Raiders. Another first down for South Floyd. Looks like this offense trying to atone for that turnover last time they had the ball. They're moving it right down the field. 
First and 10, near the 15 yard line. Landon Hall brings him up. Adam Tackett is the tight end on the left side. They are walking through the line of scrimmage right now. In the slot, Osborne. And nothing happening there as uh, Shelby Valley gets in there quickly. Back there in the backfield was Josh Jackett. Before that play actually unraveled, it uh, is moved back to the 17 after the tackle. Wesley Hall was hit immediately. Wesley Hall's got seven carries tonight so far for 56 yards, including a six yard touchdown run. So from the 17 now, second and 11, here we go. It's Hall again, spinning inside, down to the 12 yard line. Down near the 12 yard line, I think they'll spot it around the 13 though. And that's gonna bring up uh, third down. Four yard pickup for Hall. Third down and eight. Third down and eight coming up. 621 left to play here in the second quarter. Once again, the score is 12 to 8. Shelby Valley in the lead. They've scored a couple of touchdowns, unable to convert the extra points. South Floyd with a touchdown, and they got their two points. Fumbled on the one yard line on another drive that would have been uh, a sure, almost sure score for South Floyd. Didn't happen. Fumbled out of the end zone. Gave it over to Shelby Valley. And now a timeout. We'll be back after this break on the Intermountain Sports Network. <laughs> Fireworks early because uh, we've had uh, three scores already in this game. Should have had four. And... Uh, South Ford driving for another one. They're down by four points. 12 to eight are scored. 13 yard line is where it's at. The ball uh, with the third and seven coming up. South Ford, here they go. Hall under center, takes the snap. And it's a reverse going outside with the ball. Wesley Hall as he got it back and trying to find the room around the left side, close to the marker, knocked out of bounds. So a little uh, razzle dazzle there, uh, Chuck. A little trickery, and not quite uh, as close to the marker as I thought. Let's see what the spot is. Well, let's see. Big fourth down play for South Floyd. They're a little over, uh, closer to three yards away than two. But deep in Valley territory, on the 13-yard line. Fourth down and a couple, so another big play coming up on fourth down. I said the 13 to make it the eight-yard line. Of course, after the pickup and movement, that'll give them the first down probably. It's also movement on the Shelby Valley line. Let's see if South Floyd jumped. Uh, before the snap, I believe it was against the Wildcats. It is five-yard penalty and a break for South Floyd because that'll give them the necessary yardage for the first down. Well, that'll move it to half the distance to the goal. That should move it down to the four-yard line with the first and goal coming up. Number three, Kenny Parker has checked into the backfield for South Floyd. Brandon Little's been out for several plays. I don't know if they're giving him a rest or if he's gotten banged up here in the first half, but he's sitting down here on the sidelines. Well, also uh, over here is uh, Brandon standing on the sideline. In there right now is uh, Kenny Parker in the backfield. And South Floyd. Wesley Hall. Wesley Hall give him six. Another touchdown for the Raiders with 5.01 remaining here in the first half. Looks like ACC football. And it'll make it 14 to 12 now. The score as South Florida has taken the lead. We'll get the extra point try. The two point conversion variety. Maybe you can sometimes, maybe not to fire off this hard on the next play. And Osborne with momentum, able to get in the end zone. And now South We'll analyze it for you in just a second as we see the extra point trying coming up. They have the wing to the left side. Ball under center, takes the snap. He's going to throw it. And looking for the two. And not going to be able to pick up the two point conversion. Trying to throw the ball and unable to do so. So. 
South Florida, though, gets on the board with another touchdown. They take it 55 yards on that drive on eight plays. Uh, took uh, three minutes and 36 seconds off the clock before the four-yard run by Wesley Hall to make it 14 to 12. Extra point, no good. 5:01 remaining in uh, the first half. We'll be back after this timeout on the Intermountain Sports Network. <laughs> Here's the kickoff as Squibber picked up around the 40-yard line. Out to the 44, not much of a return as Jeremiah Johnson picks it up around the 40, gets it out to the 44, and Shelby Valley will start it from there. Not much of a return, but uh, nonetheless, great field position for the Wildcats as they take over with 4.56 remaining in the hand. <laughs> Shelby Valley now down by a couple of points, 14 to 12, as they'll try to answer. Going for the wishbone, Griffin he is under center now. He will give it to the second man through, spinning out to the 48-yard line. Uh, Joseph Wyatt on the carry. Could have gotten quite a few more, but Landon Hall right there with an ankle tackle stopped him. 48 yard line. Pick up a four. Second down and six coming up for the Wildcats. Griffin under center once again using the wishbone. They've used it all night long. Griffin. Thanks. Gives it to the uh, second. Oh, he loses the ball. Picked up by South Floyd to the 50, to the 40. Back the other way. Run out of bounds around the 37 yard line. So a big break for South Floyd coming up with the ball is Morris Burke, a junior, who, uh, man, picked up uh, the loose ball as uh, Zach Mullins not able to hang on to it. And really, nobody, uh, really, Chuck didn't seem to hit him. He seemed to just uh, lose control. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, Bo, but a uh, big break for the Raiders, and they've got plenty of time with 414 left in Shelby Valley territory to march on down the field. Yeah, we talked about uh, Shelby Valley with great field position. Had the ball on their 44-yard line. to talk about great field position. South Floyd gets it on the turnover at the uh, Shelby Valley 37-yard line. So they go the other direction now. South Floyd. And again to the 30. Spinning down inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Wesley Hall on the carry. And uh, I saw something right there on the play, and I think it's been happening quite a bit. A lot of yardage picked up by South Floyd. And, and Shelby Valley just not uh, tackling well at all right now, Chuck. A lot of high tackling up around the shoulders. Yeah, that's what we uh, were getting on to East Ridge about last week uh, the high tackles and the missed tackles and the Shelby Valley getting hurt by that right now. Nice 12 yard pickup another first down for the Raiders. 403 left second quarter. All under center and the give up the middle and down to the 16 yard line on the carry Wesley Hall once again for the Raiders. Hall having a great first half. Another nine yards picked up. It'll be second and one for the Raiders now. First game of the night here. The Shorty Jamison Classic, South Floyd Shelby Valley. 11 carries, 93 yards, and two touchdowns for Hall tonight so far. Mike Central and Frankfurt will tangle in the second game. This is the game that we'll do for him on WPRG. A good one so far. And here we go as the ball is loose. We get uh, the Marcus down on the field, and uh, South Floyd uh, uh, will recover. And what a timeout. They'll talk about it here. 309 left in the uh, first half. It's 14 to 12. South Floyd will be back on the Adam Mountain Sports Network. Trying to get a little more enthusiasm.
new man in the Well, it's marked on the 18 yard line. 309 left here in the second quarter. Third down and a couple coming up. And the handoff. Some uh, room to run inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. A four yard pickup. That should be enough for first down. Yeah, I think he crossed that line. He should have it. Now move the sticks, first and 10, South Florida as they continue to move here. They got the ball in great shape after the fumble recovery on the Shelby Valley 37 yard line. So they get a first down at the 14 here. I'll tell you what, I'll say something else. South Florida's offense looks fresher than the Shelby Valley Very, uh, very nice feel. We've got good weather, some a lot of blue skies. And here we go on first and ten. And straight ahead, just going this way and trying to pick up some extra yards. That's where you normally cough it up when you try to do that. Down to the 12-yard line to pick up a couple. Maybe three yards, Chuck, on the spot. If you can pick up, they'll move the sticks a little bit more, at least, uh, at least three yards. So uh, almost to the 10 yard line. Second down and seven coming up at least. Less than two minutes here in the quarter. Paul Landon brings him up. Parker behind him. The uh, give over the left tackle down to the 10. So maybe about a half a yard. Well, I got more than I thought looking through the screen here. It's uh, marked on the eight yard line, so uh, uh, a lot nicer pickup than I thought. Uh, almost three yards. Third down now, and about three coming up for the uh, Raiders of South Floyd. And again, wide open. Hall, six points. Give him six, Wesley Hall. Another touchdown for Wesley Hall. And Wesley Hall's having a big, big night. That is his third touchdown. As South Floyd has scored three times, Wesley Hall has every one of them. Now we get the extra point try coming up. Well, we were talking about the size of the interior of Shelby Valley's line, but that time there was a nice hole and Hall just blew through it and they couldn't stop him from out of the end zone. The extra point attempt, a two point conversion to coming up. One and 11 left to, to play here in the quarter. Man in motion. Looking to throw to the end zone. Complete for two. That is Joe Osborne in the corner of the end zone. Picks up the two point conversion, and that'll make it 22 to 12. South Floyd showing some great offense here. They drive down the field to get it in great shape after the fumble once again, after the turnover on the 37 of Shelby Valley. Seven plays on the drive. Score from eight yards out. Wesley Hall punches it in. Minute 11 off the clock. And to make that uh, 313 off the clock, the score coming with the minute 11 left. Wesley Hall makes it 20 to 12. The extra point, 22 to 12. South Floyd back after this timeout on the Intermountain Sports Network. Back once again, we were just remarking, of course, uh, you couldn't tell watching it on TV, but uh, taking very little time between kicks. They will line up, taking um, almost less than 30 seconds on the, on the kickoffs. It's not being a radio game, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot right now. It's a squibber on the ground and it gets away. Falling on it back at the 24-yard uh, line. Now, let's see. That is number 25. That would be uh, Chris Tackett. A freshman. Did the right thing. It got away from him a little bit, so he just fell on it instead of trying to pick it up and trying to run with it. So often you see that, and then they lose it, and uh, the coach says, now, what do we do in practice? You fall on the ball. 22 to 12, 10-point deficit, Shelby Valley. A minute eight left in the quarter. Will they try to uh, 
go the distance here with the minute eight remaining. They've got the ball on the 24-yard line. Not great field position. They're going to call a timeout. No, South Floyd is. They'll talk about it here. We'll be right back on the Intermountain Sports Network. All right, here we go. It's Griffin under center. He will keep it. He faked the handoff coming around the right side out to the 30 yard line and uh, hustles out of bounds around uh, the 35 and may have gotten the first down right there at the marker. Minute it left exactly here in the uh, half. So an eight second run and by the quarterback and uh, yeah, he stepped out a little bit short, not a yard short of the first down marker. So give him nine yards. Exactly one minute left to go in the first half. Shelby Valley got off to the quick 6-0 lead. Second down, less than one. A lot of confusion on the defense. And from the shotgun, coming to the left side on the pass, looking for the uh, sideline. Got to get out of bounds, out to the 42-yard line. The pass out to Joseph White. They pick up the first down, but did not get out of bounds. He uh, had plenty of time, plenty of room to get out of bounds, and now they stop it on uh, the first down. 47.7 left in uh, the quarter. Now a timeout Shelby Valley. They'll stop it with a little bit more than 47 seconds left here. Shelby Valley with uh, almost 48 seconds remaining as they move the sticks over there. They'll have the ball on the 41. We'll keep it right here, Chuck. And uh, boy, I tell you, I I'm really uh, happy that we finally get a good ball game to to call here, Chuck. It's been very enjoyable. Uh, I'm not one of these people that has to see 400 yards a game passing. I've been enjoying these two teams just running at each other and daring each other to stop them right in the trenches. Well, we had the games last weekend, the Pike County Bowl, of course, with uh, the Shelby Valley team defeating uh, Phelps handily, doing uh, just about anything they wanted to, really controlling that game. And South Floyd has really put up a fight here tonight as they lead by uh, 10 points, 22 to 12. And uh, that's uh, thanks to a couple of extra point attempts that they did make that uh, the score is a 10 point deficit right now. We go from the shotgun once again. It's Griffin. We'll take the snap at the 35. Look at the right side coming from behind. The quarterback hit. Nice defensive play. Jordan Johnson, a 175 pound junior, who got to the quarterback on his blind side. The pass is incomplete. Griffin had no idea that Johnson was bearing down on him. He was back there cocked and ready to throw that thing out of the pocket. And just as he was ready to release it, got hit. Not a lot of blocking from the shotgun, especially on that play. As yeah, that's supposed to buy the quarterback some extra time, isn't it? And everybody was going downfield. Now a man in motion, looking to throw, looking for the left side. It's a uh, ball that could be intercepted. It is intercepted at the 29-yard line. It is Justin Sloan, who I believe uh, just about knocked himself out. <laughs> When he hit the ground after the interception, but a nice uh, play by Sloan. That ball was up for grabs. Oh, a timing uh, play. Uh, looking to loft it up and get a receiver underneath it. And two defenders, double coverage, and Sloan with the interception. Second turnover of the night on Shelby Valley, and South Floyd takes over with a 10-point lead, 37.9 seconds left. And they've not thrown the ball much in this first half, Bo. They've only... A Attempted two passes. I don't know whether Donnie's going to just run the clock out or try some razzle dazzle here with this little bit of time left. A nice little pass on the two point conversion attempt down here, so they can throw the ball. We do know that. And, and the way they've been scoring here in this game, the way the offense is going, they'll try. Maybe. No, I guess not. They'll uh, they'll be satisfied to go into the uh, break here with that lead of 10, 22 to 12. They'll uh, not. Uh, trying to put any more points on the board. At least it doesn't look that way unless they pull something out of the hat that, uh, to maybe uh, surprise Shelby Valley here. The Raiders uh, looks like maybe they marked the ball. Lost about a, a yard on the play. Back uh, back a little bit. They laid the stakes down as the time runs out here in the first half. And a big half for South Floyd as they'll go to the locker room here. Shelby Valley, who looked so good last week against Phelps, trailing by 10. South Floyd with a lot to talk about. A tough loss last week as they lose by one point. You said a heartbreaking. When you lose by one, it's 
That's certainly got to be your first game of the year. And on the road in overtime, I, that had to be tough on them. Yeah, it makes for rough trips back to the house when, when that happens to you. But uh, plenty to be happy about here tonight as they lead in uh, this game at halftime, 22 to 12 over Shelby Valley. And we'll uh, have you some stats here for the first half at halftime. And we'll be back with the third quarter coming up on the uh, Manor Mountain Sports Network. We're here at halftime with Joan Chaffins. Uh, she's, uh, I guess, the coordinator or planner of the big I'm, McDowell uh, reunion weekend that's going on, right? Well, I don't want to take all the credit. I'm the president of the Alumni Association. And we're having a big homecoming this weekend for uh, every class from 1934 through 1993 that attended McDowell School. And uh, we have an alumni ball game going on right now down there. And tomorrow at noon, we'll be having class meetings. Tomorrow night, we have a dance at uh, 7 o'clock. And we, then Sunday, we have a memorial service. And we have people who have pre-registered all the way from California, Texas, Florida. And the main message that I would like to get out is local people, please come. These people have come a long distance. They want to see their old classmates. And we would just love it if the whole community would come out. And we really appreciate what the community has done so far. They have decorated. There are blue and gold bows everywhere and signs. And we're looking forward to a great, a great weekend. Thank you. So you've got uh, Pete Grigsby coaching one team and Johnny Ray Turner coaching the other. That's a couple of living legends right here from Floyd County going head to head tonight with yes. some of their old players, huh? Yes, they were former coaches at McDowell. And uh, Henry Webb, in fact, our, uh, our principal here at South Floyd, he is an alumnus. Of oh, yeah, I remember Henry. I've been here long enough uh, with Dr. Don and the gang doing sports. Yeah. Remember seeing Henry play. Yeah. yeah, and then our athletic director director here, Barry Hall. He's a mm -hmm. former basketball player down there. So we, we have a lot of history here at South Floyd that's with McDowell. And we just we just love McDowell, but we love South Floyd, too. And uh, we've, we've been able to just, like I said, just reach so many people that want to come back and want to see their old friends. So we're real happy about it. I don't want to say which reunion I went to last year, but I traveled all the way to Florida for mine and uh, hope everybody is going to have a great time this weekend at the McDowell reunion. I know uh, Sunday you've got some gospel singing and some other stuff going on too, don't you? Yes, we at Sunday at the Life Center of the First Baptist Church there in McDowell, we have um, we have a gospel singing at 1 o'clock, and then at 2.30 we have a memorial service where we, we pay tribute to teachers who have uh, passed away and students who have passed away. And uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Reverend Arnold Turner that will be conducting that service this Sunday. And he's a uh, minister at Allen Baptist Church. Yeah, he's on the radio every weekend. I listen to him some. Yeah. Uh, some of the students going to be singing uh, in the, and playing in the band uh, tomorrow night at the dance. Uh, some of the old students are doing some gospel music on Sunday. Yes, uh, our gospel music is it's all people that have graduated from there. And tomorrow night we have a band that will be playing and they're called Long Shot. And Greg Hall, who does our uh, commentary here at the football field, he's a member of that. And Kern Patton, who graduated from McDowell. So that's all intertwined with McDowell, too. And uh, they say that they're going to have karaoke, they're going to have some dance contests, and they've got a big time planned for us. And the thing about it is you don't have to dance to come. It's just a great time to socialize. Just come on down and, and get around and talk to everybody. It's just a lot of fun reminiscing with old friends. Sometimes you only see them once every 10, maybe 15 years. Uh, you get to catch up with them, find out what's going on in their lives, about their kids, their grandkids, their jobs, and everything. I love reunions. 
And I we do hope, too. We hope you all have a, a very, very successful and enjoyable weekend with your reunion. And we'll keep our fingers crossed that the weather will treat you as well as it's treated us out here at the Shorty Jamerson Bowl tonight. The, it's held off from the yeah. rain and the bad weather, and I hope it uh, holds off for you guys. Well, everything that we have planned, we we have it inside, mm -hmm. and anything that's outside, we can move it inside. So oh, okay. don't let the rain stop you. Bring your umbrella and come on. I know Dr. Don mentioned something about wanting to sing tomorrow night, so you're liable to see him on stage uh, with long shot tomorrow night. In fact, Dr. Don and Pete Grigsby will be making a videotape uh, for two hours tomorrow on the school grounds, and that will be available through the TV station. And the lady's name get in touch with Jackie if you want one of those videotapes and if you see Dr. Don over there run right up to him and get on TV yeah if you need a tape of the reunion it's uh, 478 4200 does that sound right Don yep there we go and you can call Jackie and uh, they'll be happy to make you a copy of everything and I know I got to speak with Pete briefly this week and he's very keyed up and excited about this as is everybody and uh, we just want to wish you a great weekend and lots of success. Okay, thank you and thank you for giving me some time here. You're certainly welcome. We're going to go ahead and take a break and we'll come back with the halftime stats right after this on Intermountain Sports. Pull loose or yard drive as they get the ball to the Shelby Valley 45 yard line and uh, take it down the field in eight plays. Wesley Hall for uh, yards, the touchdown, 14 to 12. The extra point once again, no good, 14 to 12. And then uh, before the end of the second quarter, South Floyd strikes again. A minute 11 left to play in the quarter, a 37-yard drive after fumble recovery. Seven plays, eight-yard run by Wesley Hall once again, a two-point conversion as uh, it was Landon Hall hitting Osborne in the end zone, making it 22 to 12. We've seen a lot of offense chuck in this game. Uh, South Floyd with that nice 41-yard run by Joseph Wyatt. Uh, was uh, one nice run, and they had another nice run that might have uh, resulted in the touchdown, but uh, tough luck fumbled on the, the one-yard line. South Floyd really grinding it out on the ground, Bo. I've got them for uh, well over 200 yards rushing in the first half alone. Looking at the stats, Brandon Little had 10 carries for 92 yards in the first half before he went out, and um, he had his jersey off there before halftime. I looked, and uh, he had no limp. didn't look like it was a knee or an ankle or anything, but I don't know uh, whether he's going to get back into the contest or not, but he had 92 yards in the first half. Wesley Hall, the man of the hour, had three scores tonight, 14 carries, 104 yards, and three touchdowns. Joe Osborne, uh, the fullback, had seven carries for 34 yards, including a two-point conversion run. South Flo Floyd passed the ball twice, uh, completed one of them for 11 yards to Justin Sloan. Uh, for Shelby Valley, leading the way in rushing was uh, Joseph Wyatt, seven carries for 67 yards and one touchdown. Joseph also caught the only pass receiving, uh, only pass received in the first half. Boy, I can't speak English in my old age. Uh, for five yards in the first half, Zach Mullins, uh, three carries for 59 yards, including a 41-yard touchdown scamper. He and uh, Joseph Wyatt both had uh, 41 yard touchdown runs in the first half. Timmy Griffith, uh, one out of four passing in the first half for five yards and had one pass intercepted. Uh, Griffith also with one carry for nine yards. And uh, Jeremiah Dameron uh, carried once for six yards in the first half. Penalty-wise, uh, Shelby Valley penalized twice for 15 yards and uh, South Floyd three times for 20 yards. In the turnover department, uh, Shelby Valley with uh, two turnovers to one for South Floyd. And that's a look at the halftime stats. We're going to have time here as we get set for the third quarter to get underway. South Floyd, Shelby Valley. South Floyd on top by a big old 10 points right now. It's a pretty pretty big margin in this game because that is two scores any way you look at it. And uh, Shelby Valley came out and struck first to this game. But South Floyd has showed quite a bit of offense, losing last week by just one point on the road in overtime. Shelby Valley winning easily against uh, Phelps. South Floyd proving tonight that they are a uh, really a nice team here uh, in eastern Kentucky, Floyd County, and around. Uh, the area Shelby Valley also uh, showing potential to have a, a good season a good game so far uh, in uh, this contest we expect more of the same of course a lot of action this weekend obviously as you uh, watch this game on Friday night late Friday night uh, the first showing I'm thinking it probably to be shown later on this weekend also but uh, 
big game on double X 104.9 105.3 double X and also tape late on uh, WPRG Channel 5 will be the Prestonsburg Eiffel game so you might want to check that out tomorrow uh, another game here tonight is South Floyd uh, Pike Central will play uh, Frankfurt tonight of course we will so not both be, the teams come in here uh, just a little while ago uh, we'll not be doing that game tonight but I'm sure uh, Folks at uh, Prestonsburg, probably Ken Hall and Charlie Penson tomorrow uh, will be uh, on Saturday. We'll be able to tell you what happened in the Pike Central Frankfurt uh, game and just about set for the third quarter to get underway. South Floyd, who leads by 10, will get the ball back to begin the quarter. It's a hopper. Well, maybe they will. There's a market down on the field. South Floyd trying to fill the ball around the 45 and uh, so South Ford will have the ball. Kind of scary for the Raiders. There's Shelby Valley with the squib kick. We saw that last week in every kick, Chuck. <laughs> and uh, looking to recover a fumble. This time South Ford corrals it. When they do those squib kicks, uh, they're trying to get that ball, trying to either recover a fumble or chase it down themselves. But if you don't do that, then the other team gets good field position. And South Floyd, uh, as Shelby Valley has had most of the game in good shape at the 45 yard line. 45 first and 10 coming around the left side looking to find some room spinning and turning as Brandon Hall or Brandon Little. Rather, he goes down to the 45 yard line so right back to the line of scrimmage nothing doing there. And uh, so it's South Floyd with a second and 10 a little bit slow getting up after the play uh, Shelby Valley uh, Player Chris Tackett a little slow getting up and uh, also limping out on the field, looking like uh, picked up an injury. Uh, John McPeak. Here comes Johnson into the yeah, line. They're going to carry him out. Either he's twisted an ankle or got a pretty bad cramp. One of the two. Saw a lot of that uh, last week also. Beginning of this game for South Floyd, we uh, we were checking the backfield. Brandon Little we talked about, and Brandon Little in the backfield. And before the half ended, uh, Chuck, we had neither one of those in the lineup. Both of them were on the sidelines. So let's see what kind of offense that uh, Chuck, uh, uh, that South Floyd will, <laughs> Chuck will come up with. Well, anyway. Uh, Obviously, Floyd, Little not hurt because he's got the jersey on and out there for the second half. So it may have just been some of Donnie's strategy to keep him fresh for the second half. And a dive over the right side out to the 47 yard line in the backfield that time was uh, Joe Osborne who's seen a lot of action and looks like uh, a little bit shaken up uh, Landon Hall uh, who uh, plunged ahead for uh, almost a yard. We'll give him a yard out to the 46 yard line. So tough going to begin the third quarter. Third down and nine coming up. It's a bowl game named after a long time legendary Floyd County coach Shorty Jamerson, of course, his son Dewey, an assistant coach down at Prestonsburg, and grandson uh, Nick, big football star at Prestonsburg, being recruited by UK. Pitch on 39 out across midfield to the 45. May have it up for the first down. Nice play by South Floyd, needing nine yards. The pitch comes to Brandon Little, who takes it ahead for just about that. According to the spot, we may uh, actually have to measure here. We'll see. You know, Bo and I were talking off camera before this ball game started. Uh, the football coach at Frankfurt uh, is from the local area. Joey Thacker played football and basketball, baseball down at Elkhorn City, and he and his wife both teach up at uh, Frankfurt now. But uh, Joey's got mountain roots and uh, had a pretty good couple of seasons recently down at Frankfurt. Mountain Roots. Nine yard pickup. We'll see as the sticks come out if it will be enough for the first down. It was uh, marked on the sideline right at the 45. They needed nine yards for the first down. Let's see if they got a short nine or a long nine here, Chuck. 10 30 left to play in the third quarter, and it's a little short. They say looked like originally that he had it, but uh, the spot not as favorable, I think, as Donnie would have liked. Donnie made it to the 45. They're not going to give him the 45. They're going to give him the ball uh, halfway between the 46 and the 45. Or well, it's very close to the 45. The uh, nose of the ball, but need to get across the 45 to get the first down. So South Floyd, no doubt. Uh, no 
no-brainer there. They'll go for it on fourth and inches. Yeah, let's see now. They come up to the line. They had a fourth down earlier in the game that they um, ended up scoring a touchdown after they picked up the fourth and then took it on in for the touchdown a little bit later. Now they've got a fourth down. Oh, they get a bad snap. Uh, the ball is uh, mishandled. Let's see. Shelby Valley's going to have it. Didn't make it. Yep, miscue on that one, and they didn't get the first down. Wow. Fourth and inches, and the way they've been moving the ball here tonight, you would almost give it to them, you know? Wesley Hall getting up rather gingerly. Looked like he uh, may have turned an ankle just a little bit there as he limps off the sideline. Kind of like the free throw shooter in basketball, you know, the automatic. Fourth and inches, you would think the way South Floyd's offense has been going, if, but you never know. That's why they play the game. It's the wishbone for the Wildcats. Get a big opening to the 45, down to the 40-yard line. Wide on the carry. The uh, tackle made finally by Jordan Johnson, but not before Wyatt got into the secondary and picked up the first down. That's a big 14-yard uh, pickup. South Floyd's got to wrap Wyatt up because he's got a lot of speed and quickness to the outside. And here we go. It is Zach Mullins inside the, the 35, down to the 34-yard line. So he's got another chunk of ground. He picks up at least seven yards on the play. Well, I was going to say that Shelby Valley came fired up out of the locker room, but they didn't go into the locker room at halftime, but they are definitely uh, hitting and accomplishing something early in this second half. Shelby Valley, wishbone, Griffin under center. He takes the snap and the give to the left side. Got the first down and more. Plenty of room to run down to the 10, to the 5, headed for the end zone. Give him six. Shelby Valley getting on uh, the board here with uh, 9.22 remaining in the third quarter as uh, they get a big touchdown and putting them uh, right back in the game. Actually, we're not out of the game, but that certainly puts them back in the business. Joseph Wyatt takes it in uh, on the run from 34 yards. We've had some uh, long runs, good blocking out in front of him as he took it around the left side, and now Shelby Valley will go for the two. Griffin has them set now. And the give to the left side, and it would have been two, but the flag will stop the play. Joseph Wyatt uh, on the carry. Nine twenty-two left to play in the third quarter. The penalty will move it back to around the eight-yard line. Yeah, that gives Donnie a chance to bark some directions out to his defense. He went about 15 yards out on the field. Didn't like that big hole that Wyatt just ran through. So the drive, only 51 seconds elapsing off the clock. Three plays, 34-yard touchdown. Joseph White going for the two from the eight-yard line. Griffin will tuck it in on the option. Nobody to pitch it to. No room to run. Cannot turn it up, so it remains the way it is now at 22 to 18 after another failed extra point by Shelby Valley. We'll be back with more on the Intermountain Sports Network. the kickoff a line drive at the 15 out to the 20 the 25 the 30 to the 40 and still on his feet across the 40 to the 42 yard line trying to pick up a number here for you Chuck uh, for the folks out there I didn't quite catch it it's kind of hard to see right now look like a, a lineman uh, what's that to 55 on that return could have been he was kind of coming out of that pile, wasn't he? Looked like it uh, might have been. Matt Hall couldn't quite tell. I believe it was. Well, anyway, we'll uh, we'll give him the ball at the 41-yard line. South Floyd, once again, pretty good field position. 9-12 remaining here in the third quarter. 54-yard drive by Shelby Valley. And it's now 22-18. to South Floyd still in the lead. They have the ball and the whistles. And the flags will stop the play. 
Like some movement. Either you got line up in the neutral zone or motion in the offensive backfield, one of the two. It is Shelby Valley. It is against the defense. Well, uh, actually, just about every time that happens, I will say offense because nine times out of ten it will be. But You're right. Or maybe even more than that, the odds against the offense. But this time it was Shelby Valley in the neutral zone. That'll give them five yards up to the 46-yard line now. Lining up first and five. All under center. Gives to the left side. Nothing happening there. Good defense. <laughs> Good hit by Collier. Earl Collier. No, that was uh, 64, not 54. Was it? I thought it was 54, too. I was looking at... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's 54. It is 54. I tell you, my eyes are getting bad. 300-pound senior. He just walloped the ball carrier for little or no gain there. Right back at the 46-yard line. It'll be second down and five now. Good game here tonight. It's been a dandy. Glad to bring it to you. As I said earlier, my first trip here to South Floyd. Chuck and Dr. Don have been here quite a few times, but uh, happy to be here on this Friday night at the city. Man in motion for the Raiders. The snap, the pitch comes uh, bobbled a little bit out to the 45, putting his head down and and pulling ahead for a couple of extra yards, Brandon Little before he's wrestled out of bounds on the nearest side. And Jeremiah Johnson in there for uh, the tackle for Shelby Valley, but a pretty good, uh, well, about a three yard pickup. That'll make a third down and two coming up. Jeremiah Johnson. We're gonna have to bring, bring you down here one night, Bo, when they have the quarterback club barbecuing down in the uh, end zone down there. They have some just absolutely fantastic food down here and Dr. Don will attest to that. That would be good. Pork chops, barbecue, all kind of stuff. It depends on which week you come as to what you're going to get. Kind of had our hopes up for that tonight, but didn't happen. <laughs> Maybe the next time. And the play is stopped. South Ford sending a man in motion and that may have been the penalty here. I it's, think so. Yep. It's a procedure called. Well, they had a third and two. That'll make it about third and seven now as they move it back. Makes it a little tougher on a running team to pick up seven on third down than two. Back to the 44. 8-12 remaining, third quarter, 22 to 18. South Floyd on top of this game. Big night uh, tonight for... Uh, Wesley Hall, who's picked up three touchdowns for South Floyd. Joseph White with a pretty good night for Shelby Valley also. Third and seven now. All up under center. Retreating. He's going down at the 38-yard line. There's another flag down. Let's see what this is all about. Probably, Probably got a hold. Now you got two or a couple more flags down. After the play. May have had a late hit or a rough in the pass or something, but I think he had a hold before that. I think it's going to be a late hit because very slowly getting up off the uh, off the turf after that tackle. Uh, the quarterback, Landon Hall, he's shakily coming to the sideline. Let's uh, sort this uh, baby out here. Kind of thought Hall was going to try to pass the ball, but uh, he took off running with it and paid a heavy price. Wildcats certainly had it uh, read out very well. They got to, to the quarterback in a hurry as he tried to retreat a little bit and then uh, turn it up around the left side. The officials will discuss it. They'll mark it off. Hmm. And Collier got good penetration into the backfield that time, kind of messed that play up for Landon Hall. Well, let's see. What? We, we're going to mark off the holding penalty, and then we're going to turn around and mark off the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. That'll put it right back out at the uh, close to where it was. <laughs> oh, my. Third down and three once again for South Floyd after all that marking off. Goes Hall back to the huddle. Well, after that last hit, I doubt that Hall will uh, run a quarterback keeper on this play. 7.37 left, third quarter. 
The Raiders coming up to the line, third down and seven. Out of center goes Little, or Hall rather. And the hand off to the right side. Osborne spinning and did not get anything at all. Maybe, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down coming up. Jared Branham with an outstanding play there for Shelby Valley, number 27. He came right up, read the play, and hit the man before he could go anywhere. So Shelby Valley has stopped South Floyd on this drive. They got the ball on the 41-yard uh, line. They made it out to the 44, and that's all here as uh, fourth down has arrived for the Raiders, and they'll uh, send in uh, the punter now. That, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see too many punters wearing uh, number 52, and that's Robert Mullins. He'll punt the ball, and uh, dropping back for Shelby Valley, Joseph Wyatt. A line drive kick bounces around the 30 yard line. It'll roll dead at the 26 yard line. So uh, not the longest punt in the world, but it did uh, pretty good considering that there was no return. So Shelby Valley will have it at uh, the 26. Yeah, that last punt was very low, just barely cleared the lineman's head. The Valley did not have momentum going into halftime, but it looks like they're trying to build some here in this third period. They've scored first and they've held South Floyd, so they're right back in this thing. Let's see, that punt goes 30 yards on the roll. No return. Got more out of it than I thought he did. Wishbone for the 26, first and 10, Valley. Spinning, turning at the 30 to the 32-yard line. It's Joseph Wyatt, the senior, on the carry. Secured pickup for Wyatt. That will bring up second and four. That's where Wyatt's so dangerous. He keeps digging and spinning. He spins out of tackles and then has the quickness and speed to burst it to the outside. And Wildcats spread the offense. Two receivers wide to each side. Wide outs to the right side of the field. Wyatt goes in motion. The pitch on the option goes to Wyatt. Looking for room. Stutter step out to the 35-yard line. Picks up a couple, maybe three. And that's all before he is mowed down on the near sideline. If you're just joining us here tonight, it's 22 to 18. We've got 551 left in the third quarter. Uh, with that 22 is South Floyd on top of this game. Good containment over here on the left side of the field by South Floyd. They would not let Wyatt turn the corner on that one. From the 35, third and one. Once again, the wishbone. Griffin, he'll give the first man plenty. And he's out to midfield. Still on his feet. Not the best tackling in the world as uh, Mullins gets it down to the 46-yard line. And I say that, Chuck, uh, not to take anything away from Mullins, but you can see him they're tackling up around the shoulders, and you can't do that. Yeah, both teams have had those uh, plays like that here in this ball game, and that's something the coaches do not teach them in practice to do. So they've uh, battered their way inside uh, South Florida territory, down at the 46, first and 10. For the Wildcats, Wishbone, Griffin, Gibbs, first man into the line, inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Let's see, Wyatt on the, the carry. Shelby Valley starting to run real well against this South Floyd defense. Uh, they were stopped toward the end of the first half, but uh, they look like early game form here early in the second half. Seven yard pickup, second and three. Once again, Griffin, first man Mullins is hammered. Oh man, it's it's loose, but the whistle had blown. 36 yard line, a pickup of about, uh, well, it's close to the first down It's gonna be very close to the first down marker. But uh, nonetheless, uh, he took a lick as he came through. Couldn't quite tell who it was. Those numbers now with the silver uniforms and uh, the uh, darker numbers kind of blending in a little dirty now. As it comes on the keeper, Griffin, he's down to the 25, the 20, and he has uh, muscled down. Justin Sloan making the touchdown saving tackle. We'll see where the spot's going to be. It's close to the 20, right on the 20-yard line. So 
That'll be a 16-yard pickup for the quarterback, Griffin, on the keeper. Griffin's only carried twice, but he's picked up nine and 16 yards on those two runs, so he's shown the ability to get outside. Somewhere, either upstairs or on the sideline, grinning right now. 20 yard line. Not in that wishbone on this play. Got a man in motion. Wyatt coming. It's a quick hitter into the line. Dameron down to the 25 or the 15 make it and maybe nosing inside the 15 yard line. A pickup of at least five on the play. Well, early in this second half, Shelby Valley running on South Floyd like they did on Phelps last week. They must have uh, talked to the linemen and got them fired up coming out here in the second half. Here we go. And Zach Mullins, he, well, let's see, did the ball get away? Uh, Shelby Valley, I believe, got it back. Down to the, uh, about the 12-yard line, a pickup of maybe three more. Third down and a long one, maybe maybe two yards. They call it the 11-yard line. Shelby Valley on the march. They took the ball at uh, their 26-yard line. They moved it down to the 11-yard line of South Floyd. Go back to the wishbone here. Shelby Valley, Griffin, and right in uh, to the middle, and give him six. That is Joseph White who takes it in from 11 yards out. 24-22, Shelby Valley, the extra point coming up. Shelby Valley, 3.20 left here in the third quarter as they line up for the extra point. And the wishbone looking for two. And did they make it? I believe so. Finally got their two point conversion. Couldn't tell. Uh, could you tell who it was, Chuck? Tell you, between the lights in my face and the screen in the window, I'm having trouble reading some of these numbers. That was uh, Jeremiah Dameron. That's who I'm going to give it to. I believe that's who it was. The screen right in front of us makes it hard to see those numbers in a certain part of the field. 26-22, Shelby Valley's taking the lead. We'll be back on the Inner Mountain Sports Network. Three twenty remaining. Shelby Valley once again will kick off. They've taken the lead. It's a short one, knocked down at the forty-seven yard line. So South Floyd once again will have the ball in very nice field position at their 40, 47 yard line. Darren, Darren Triplett on the recovery right there at the line for South Floyd. Kicked it right into his hands. He batted it down and fell on it. So it was uh, Joseph White. Is that who got that last touch down there? Shelby Valley just now from 11 yards out. Wyatt now with three touchdowns on the night to equal his counterpart on the other side there, uh, Wesley Hall, both of them with three scores. The official stops in and uh, stops the play. Shelby Valley wanting a timeout here. 318 remaining in the contest, 26 to 22. So uh, Shelby Valley uh, takes uh, the ball after the punt from the South Floyd. They take it on their 26 yard line. So they uh, go 74 yards on the drive. It took uh, nine plays and uh, 312 off the clock. 11 yard run by Joseph White puts it into the end zone. The extra point to the two point conversion, we believe. It was uh, well, I agree with you. Uh, Jeremiah Dameron that took it in for the two point conversion. And Shelby Valley's called the timeout here. The ball is marked on the 48-yard uh, line. South Floyd now trailing in this game by four points. It's been a seesaw battle. It's been a good one. I've really enjoyed this game here tonight. I've had a lot of fun doing it so far, and we've got more fireworks to come with 318 remaining in the third quarter. Still plenty more football action left, and uh, 
who knows this this could end up Chuck whoever has the the last uh, drive so South Floyd from the 48 yard line the give as we go back to action comes around the left side to the 40 yard line cutting back in nice cut back. Number 30 look out beautiful run down to the 10 going in for the touchdown give him six Wesley Hall what a night he's had no flags on the field it'll stand Wesley Hall takes it to 52 yards for the touchdown and uh, <laughs> well, it's got the home faithful fired up again they were kind of down in the mouth after Shelby Valley came roaring out of the gates here in the second half but uh, great run there by Hall got a nice block and then cut it into the middle of the field and outran the defense. That's pretty easy, uh, Chuck, to figure that one out. One play, 52 <laughs> yards, seven seconds off the clock. Wow. What uh, yardage this guy's got, if you will, kind of figure that out for us here in a second. Going for the two-point conversion. The pitch to the outside, looking for the corner. Down near the goal line, didn't make it. Uh, a little bit short of the goal line, unable to make it in for the two-point conversion. It will remain at 28 to 26 as... Uh, the Raiders come back for the lead and will return after this time out on the Intermountain Sports Network. Well, the Raiders scored quickly. Wesley Hall, what is that, his fourth touchdown tonight? Yep, 16 carries, 156 yards, and four scores. And this one's not anywhere near being over yet, folks. <laughs> Tons of time left as uh, now South Floyd will kick off to Shelby Valley. We'll see what the Wildcats can do. Here's the short kick, and it bounces along the ground, taken around the 42-yard line, and uh, it will be downed there at the 42-yard line. Yeah, let's see. Josh Tackett will be the man that will pick up the uh, bouncing ball in Shelby Valley once again. Uh, they've, uh, for the most part, both of these teams have had pretty good field position. I remember one time, I believe, South Floyd uh, had the ball on their 16-yard line, and one time that Shelby Valley's had it on their 20. But other than that, it's been just about all game long, great field position for both teams. And uh, with South Floyd calling the timeout, they are. And before we uh, begin the series, 3:01 remaining in the third quarter, 28 to 26, South Floyd back after, after this on the Inner Mountain Sports Network. From the wishbone, Griffin gives it to the left side, out to the 45, to the 46. Flags come in on the play. Wyatt coming up out of the bottom of that pile. I think he's the one that carried it. Yeah. 301 remaining as uh, the drive began. The play began. 255 now. So they'll mark off the penalty. It goes against South Floyd. They got the ball up to the 46 yard line. They'll add something on to it. Must have been a face mask penalty to five yards. So to the 49 yard line. Inside. Uh, Raider territory. It'll uh, be second and very short from the wishbone once again. It's Griffin. And the give, it's Wyatt and first down to the 43 yard line. Landon Hall on the tackle there for the Raiders. First and 10, Shelby Valley at the 44, five yard pickup. From the wishbone, Griffin has him set. He is going to give it to the second man, Wyatt again, and Wyatt uh, gets ahead for oh, about a couple of yards down to the 42-yard line. 
Six. Joseph Wyatt, the senior, getting some carries now here late in the third quarter. Wyatt, not a big kid, but plays bigger than he's listed. He's listed at 5'7", 165, but he's got a lot of power in that leg drive and been able to burst through the line tonight. This time it is Mullings. Not much happening there. Uh, they only got one yard. I gave him two of the last play. One yard to, down to the uh, about the 43 yard line. That time the carry was uh, almost to the 41, so a two yard pickup. Third down coming up at seven. Let's see if uh, Shelby Valley will put it up here on third and seven from the wishbone. They'll operate and going to throw the ball. They will try to put it up. Griffin being chased out of the pocket. He's got the first down, though. Loses the football, but it goes out of bounds. Shelby Valley will have it. Let's see where the mark's going to be after the, uh, the forward progress and the fumble, which went behind the runner. First down, Shelby Valley. Well, Griffin's not run much, but when he's had to, he has done a fine job of it, and he picks up another first down for the Wildcats. 28-yard line. 13-yard pickup. First and 10, once again, from the wishbone. Looked like South Floyd was going to have Griffin for a big loss there. To the left side, and... Couple, maybe, well, let's see. Pretty nice pick up there, actually. Uh, down to the 23-yard uh, line. White getting a lot of carries. Joseph White. Look through these binoculars, and it makes it nicer to see who's got the ball, but it makes it harder to see uh, how many yards they pick up. So he's got the good and the bad. And that is wide for sure. He's got the ball down to the 15-yard line, inside the 15, and that's another first down for Shelby Valley. They'll mark it on the 14-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. First and 10, Shelby Valley as they... Uh, Began this drive on their 42-yard line. They've moved it down to the 14 now. First down. Wyatt with 169 yards rushing tonight to go along with uh, 37 three seconds. touchdowns. Left of the quarter. It goes to Mullins inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Six-yard pickup, and that'll make it second and four. Well, South Floyd not as big up in the trenches as Shelby Valley, and they held their own in the first half pretty well, but I think the size and power of Shelby Valley is starting to wear them down because there's been a lot of holes for the Wildcat backs to run through here early in this second half of play. Mark it uh, back a little bit to the nine-yard line, and there goes White. He's got an opening, but coming from behind to make the tackle. Down inside the five-yard line. That uh, will be another first down, I believe, for the Wildcats here. First and goal should be coming up as the quarter comes to an end. 28 to 26 after three quarters of play. Uh, South Floyd in uh, the lead right now, but Shelby Valley knocking on the door. We'll be right back with quarter number four after this break of the Undermountain Sports Network. Screen shouldn't make that big a difference, but it's hard to tell those numbers through that screen. Bo Daniels, Chuck Schofield, along with you, Dr. Don on camera tonight. It's the fourth quarter coming up as Shelby Valley has a first and goal. Well, they're showing third down on the far side, so a little bit third shorter. Down than first and down, what mark. about a foot, foot and a half? Yes, so thought they'd got a first down there, but not uh, not the case. Third and very short. Shelby Valley, and right up the middle, that'll definitely be a first down. A little bit short of the goal line. And. Uh, once again, it's Wyatt on the carry down to the one yard line. Give him three yards on the pickup. 
first tell you, to this go. game may end up being whoever has the ball last is going to win this one. Yeah, that's what I said earlier, Chuck. Whoever's on the last drive, or the time may just run out on somebody here. Looking for that one yard and pay dirt. They get it. The touchdown to give them six. Shelby Valley scoring. Wyatt once again as he carries it in for the touchdown from one yard out. Shelby Valley getting on the board, making it 32 to 28 now. We get the extra point attempt coming up for the Wildcats. 11.29 remaining. Looking for the two extra points going from the wishbone here. And let's see, trying to boil his way in there. I believe they did, and yes, they did. They've got the two. Zach Mullins on the carry that time for the two-point conversion. Big number 47 who uh, picks up the two. That'll make it 34 to 28. Shelby Valley will be right back on the Out of Mountain Sports Network. Guys on the line that's outweighed by 78, 800 pounds. You know, they can hold their own for a while, but they get wore out and worn down as the game gets longer. Yeah. Back once again, Shelby Valley drives it down the field. 58 yards, 11 plays, capped off by a one-yard run by Wyatt to put it into the end zone. Zach Mullins on a two-point conversion run. That'll make it now 34 to 28. They took uh, three minutes and 42 seconds off the clock with those 11 plays. 11:29 remaining in the game. That's when the score came and set for the kickoff. Now Shelby Valley kicking off to South Florida. A seesaw battle to say the least. A lot of offense here tonight. Out to the 25-yard line on the return, cutting up around the right side to the 40 and to the 43 yard line on the return is Adam Tackett for South Ford going the other way and once again uh, check as we've seen just about every single drive great field position well that time we actually had the first real kickoff I think of the ball game everybody's been squib kicking and pooch kicking to each other and uh, that time Johnson booted it and Tackett still got the ball back up to near midfield where everybody's been starting from on offense all game. It's 11 16 left to play here in the game tonight. As we've talked about, uh, this could uh, end up with the last team, whoever has the ball, to end the game because it's going back and forth right now. It was a 10 point deficit at halftime. That changed quickly. Got a flag down on the field on the near sideline before the play gets underway. That uh, will uh, mean maybe a delay of game or too many uh, too many men um, well, the official comes in they'll discuss it here and it'll be a penalty uh, looks like against Shelby Valley yeah they've nope. got 12 no nope. they'll wave it off they say no nope. they got 12 men on the field folks I just counted them <laughs> that's okay send one off that'll be all right no problem okay <laughs> Well, gee, I don't know about that. That's uh, that's a little controversy right there. It goes to the left side, uh, trying to bounce out there, unable to uh, cut it uh, around that corner. Brandon Little, who uh, hasn't carried the ball a lot since early in the ball game, Little maybe maybe a yard. They'll move the stick ahead a little bit. Second down to nine coming up. Yeah, he's not been nearly as effective here in this second half as he was earlier in the ball game. So I guess we could say that the ball was on the 43 to begin the drive. Now on the 44 after the one yard pickup. Back to work for the Raiders now as they trail in this game 34 to 28 and one thing about it with that two point conversion by Shelby Valley it's now a six point game so if South Floyd scores they'll be forced to get the extra point around the left side out to, uh, back to the line of scrimmage and that's uh, that's all she wrote over there on that uh, side of the field Wesley Hall on the carry nothing nothing could do it that Wildcat defense looking tough there maybe half a yard. South Floyd uh, 
three out of the five men on that offensive line giving up a lot of size to Shelby Valley down in the interior there. And you can battle somebody that outweighs you 50 or 60 pounds even for a while, but I think they're starting to wear down and they're just not opening very many holes here as the game wears on. Third down and about eight coming up for the South Floyd Raiders now. Landon Hall brings them up to the line of scrimmage. They operate with the split backs. Hall, he'll give it. No, nope, it's loose on the field now. And uh, jumping in there to uh, get on top of that ball was Osborne, I believe, that recovered that fumble as the ball got away on the handoff. So Osborne getting on top of the ball. Loss on the uh, busted play back at the, let's say, the 42-yard line. So loss, a loss of three. Fourth down coming up, and one of the few times tonight that South Floyd, maybe I, if, if I'm thinking straight, only the second time that they punted the ball here tonight. Yeah, I think you're right. They had a, what was it, a 30-yarder last time that just barely cleared the uh, two lines. And before they uh, do punt the ball, they have to call a timeout. Not able to get uh, the proper people out on the field. Timeout on the field, 34-28. Uh, we'll be back after this break on the Inner Mountain Sports Network. So now I guess they've got it all figured out. We're going to get the punt from South Floyd. Robert Mullins will punt it away. He takes the snap. It's another line drive kick. Bounces along around the 25 yard line. Picked it up out to the 30 yard line. Wide headed up field and uh, plenty of room and finally corralled at the 45 yard line. Out there to bring him down, Anthony Barker. But all kinds of room, not uh, not good coverage that time by South Floyd. No, the punt kind of rolled and bounced around a little bit, gave the coverage team time to get down there, but uh, Wyatt just went through three or four of them. So 8.45 left to play here in the game. Shelby Valley in the lead right now with a score of 34 to 28, and uh, they'll come up to the line of scrimmage from their 44 from the wishbone and the first man through it is uh, Zach Mullins close to the first down as he rumbles down to the 46 yard line on the other side of that 50. Shelby Valley that time pretty astute they had a kind of a quick snap uh, Landon Hall was coming onto the field and looked like he was adjusting his trend, uh, chin strap and Shelby Valley was running the play he was 30 yards from the play. I thought you were going to say trench coat. <laughs> to the we'll court. need those later in the season, I'm sure. Down to the 46, and the whistles blow before the play actually develops here. And so when they stop it like that, you would think it's uh, offensive movement. Illegal procedure, the call, they'll back them up. They had a second and one, and now it's going to be second and six as they move it back to the 49, the other side of that 50-yard line. Third penalty on Shelby Valley here in the second half. All of them have been of the five-yard garden variety. Wishbone uh, formation for Shelby Valley. Man in motion, and now they're set, and uh, it goes to the first man. That's White. Gets across the 50 to the 49. He has stood up. And some pretty nice tackling right there. Had to pick it up. One of those, uh, one of those uh, South Florida Raiders in there on the stop was uh, Landon Hall himself, and uh, I believe that was Dustin Moore, number 64, that came in, also along with Hall. And so it's now third down and uh, around four yards. Shelby Valley. Shelby Valley wishbone. Griffin takes the snap, and he's going to keep it around the right side, looking for the marker. He's got it. Goes out of bounds on the far side of the field, down to the 40. First down. Seven twenty-one left of the game. Shelby Valley with the big first down. Dameron. Uh, on the keeper as they move the markers right on the 40-yard line. Griffith hasn't run much, but the runs he's made have been very important as to keeping drives alive for the Wildcats' stunt. 
Under center, Griffin once again from the wishbone formation. The first man in to the line and down to the 35-yard line. Dameron, I believe it was, that uh, carried the ball that time for the Wildcats. That would be Jeremiah. Picked up about four. Second down coming up and six. From the 37. Wishbone and picked up off the ground and they get it down to about the 31 to pick up of about five after the bobble there. Trying to pick up that uh, number for you on the tackle. Once again, it's number seven. He's been in there on defense just about all night as well as uh, being a pretty good little quarterback. Uh, Landon Hall on the stop. Third down and five coming up. A pickup of about one. Wishbone. Oh, and loose on the field. The markers come down. Who has it now? Shelby Valley recovers. But it will be fourth down and about nine. It's uh, after the fumble, it comes back to the 39 yard line. Zach Mullins recovering the fumble to at least keep the ball in Shelby Valley hands momentarily. South Florida expecting to punt. I don't know if that's going to happen here because they are inside the 40 yard line. Let's see if they will punt it away. I haven't seen the indication. South Florida dropping some people back right now to return this punt. Uh, back there's Adam Tackett, but they're going to go for it. I didn't think that they would punt the ball away here uh, down at the 39 like they are. Fourth and nine coming up. Long count by uh, Griffin. Wishbone formation and rolling to the right on the option. Cutting it upfield to the sideline. Shoved out of bounds. Didn't make the marker. Well short of that first down marker. Griffin needed about nine, picked up, I think, maybe six or seven, and South Floyd takes over on downs. Well, that's a decision the coach will make. Uh, Greg Napier choosing to go for it there. Of course, a lot of people will say after the play is over with, why didn't he punt and try to put them inside the 10 or something yeah. like that? But uh, Both these teams are so used to starting around the 40 to 45-yard line every time. Uh, I guess they figured that that was fine. Well, I didn't think they were going to punt. I thought they would go for it there. So uh, South Floyd will have the ball at the 34-yard line. Shelby Valley has the lead. Uh, but uh, first down and 10 for South Florida. They've got plenty of time. 5.05 remaining uh, in this contest here as we see uh, the Raiders go back to work. One back. Here comes a man in motion. Hall will pitch it. Looking uh, for blocking out in front to the 35 to 40 and out to the 45. A nice pickup there as Brandon Little finds some room to run. Coming in to uh, make the stop and to cut him off. A number that uh, is not on our roster. We uh, we see a number five out there to, to make the tackle. We don't have a Yeah, they've five. had a number 10 for South Floyd on the field tonight, too, and we don't have his well, that's, name. Uh, that's Morris Perth. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. At the bottom there. I saw number five out there earlier for Shelby Valley, and I said, we don't have a five on our roster. 11 yard pickup for the South Floyd Raiders. They need a score. Goes to the left side. That is Wesley Hall. He's close to the first down. Goes to the Shelby Valley 44 yard line before he's finally uh, stopped. And, and let's see. In there on the tackle was uh, Daryl Roberts for Shelby Valley at uh, the 44 now. Well, after being bottled up most of this second half, South Floyd with a couple of quick hitters and a couple of 11, 12 yard gains on the first two carries of this drive. Nice little pick up there for the first down. And once again, it's Hall under center. There goes uh, Osborne in motion. The pitch comes to the left side. And the Hall trying to cut it up, still on his feet. And close to the marker. A little short, probably, but. Uh, good pickup by Brandon Little, picked up around nine yards. As uh, we'll see the spot, I think, around the 36-yard line. They will mark it down there, so about uh, at least eight yards on the pickup for uh, Brandon Little. He's a uh, senior, 186 pounds. Second down and very short. That time, another example of high tackling by Shelby Valley. They yep. had little about four yards into that run, and he just ran through that tackle, picked up about five more. Something they definitely need to work on, without a doubt. Need uh, just about a yard for the first down. I don't think they got it straight I don't ahead. think so either. 
Nice defense that time by uh, Shelby Valley. I saw Griffin in there uh, on, the, on the stop along with, uh, let's see, also in there was Jeremiah Johnson and uh, Jared Brown around the ball. But nice defense by the Wildcats. Uh, actually lost about a half a yard. Third down now. And one, one and a half. Close to two. Hall under center. Gives it to uh, West. Oh. Oh, loses back to the 40 yard line. So lost of four on the play. That'll bring up fourth down. So it's a big play is defensively, at least the last two by Shelby Valley. Fourth down and five. Let's see if South Floyd will go for it here. Probably they will. We saw Shelby Valley do it. I think South Floyd will too as the clock ticks with 2.25 remaining in the game. South Floyd, especially them being down by a touchdown here. Two backs from side uh, behind Hall. Here's the snap from the shotgun. Oh, right into his hands, and he couldn't hold on. Well, Zach Mullins on the defense down there. Uh, yeah, right into the hands without a doubt. I believe that's uh, Adam Tackett, the intended receiver. As I said, hard to tell with the, the dirty jerseys. Now we can barely see the 80 out there. First and 10 the other way, so time's really going to be a factor. There's been a lot of timeouts yeah. called. South Florida, game. I think, is used two in this second half, so they're not going to be able to stop the clock here uh, as much as they'd like. 2-10 left, and Shelby Valley with the football. So Shelby Valley can pick up some first downs here as it goes right up the uh, middle and then cutting outside. Wyatt gets out to the 49-yard line. Nice pick up there. Uh, that market on the 48 looks like uh, eight yard pickup second and two big chunk of, of uh, turf out there picked up by Shelby Valley and that's something South Floyd cannot allow as the clock ticks down now to 140 they get a first down or two it's over here it's, uh, all, all uh, Shelby Valley needs to do is uh, Keep this drive alive, just uh, a first down or two to win this ball game from the wishbone. And the first down, Shelby Valley down to the 45 yard line inside South Floyd territory. That is Joseph Wyatt on the carry. Gets about seven yards on the pickup. Better 20 left to play. It's 34 to 28. Shelby Valley on top with the ball as uh, South Floyd could not pick up the first down. They went for it on fourth down, had a pass, had a man out there wide open, really, and uh, should have kept the drive alive. And I'm sure he's very disgusted. Uh, Tackett we're talking about and tough break for the Raiders. Wyatt once again, close to the 40. We'll, we'll give him the, uh, the 41. As they had the ball on the 45 there. And about a four yard pickup. Clock continues to tick. 54 seconds. Well, I believe we do have a timeout called on the field now with 54 seconds left. Second and five coming up for the Wildcats. We'll return after this break on the Out of Sports Network. Fifty-four point one officially left on the clock. It goes to Wyatt, fighting for room to run. He's got the first down inside the thirty-five to about the thirty-three yard line. So pick up of eight yards, and that's something that Shelby uh, Valley needed. South Floyd could not allow, and there they did, and that just about puts uh, the finishing uh, nails in the coffin here. Yeah, I think so. I think South Floyd's out of timeouts and. Even if they weren't, Shelby Valley's got four downs and 40-something seconds to work with. So if that is the case, then all Shelby Valley has to do here is kneel on the ball, and this game is history. It's got to be a heartbreaking loss for South Floyd. Looked like they were really threatening to score on their last possession and a couple of great defensive stands by the Wildcats. And they will not do a kneel on the ball. They'll, uh, that's kind of dangerous there as they give it to Wyatt right up the middle. He does uh, get down to 
About the 30-yard line, but uh, that's all. Uh, that's all they needed. Keep the clock running. Hang on to the ball for the final play as South Ford is unable to stop it. And uh, just to think about it here, uh, Chuck. Two games for South Florida. They've lost by a total of seven points in two games. So one last week, six points this week. We'll be back to wrap it up for you as uh, Shelby Valley has a hard fought victory here tonight. Another win for the Wildcats. Another tough loss for the uh, South Florida Raiders here tonight. We'll return on the Inner Mountain Sports Network. To be a little bit uh, disappointed here tonight in the in the loss. The team played very well, but just came out on the short end once again, losing by one point in overtime last week. Six points tonight, so seven points in two weeks, two games that they lose. A scoring recap in the second half with 10-13 remaining in the third quarter. A 54-yard uh, drive as Shelby Valley went in at halftime. Ten points down. They come out with a 54-yard drive. Three plays. And a 34-yard run by Wyatt. And it gets uh, Shelby Valley definitely back in the ball game. And then uh, Shelby Valley uh, once again in the third quarter. A 74-yard drive, nine plays, 11-yard run by Joseph Wyatt with taking uh, 312 off the clock and uh, puts uh, Shelby Valley in the lead. Then South Floyd with 305 in the fourth quarter, 52-yard run. Uh, for a drive, one, uh, well, a drive and a run. It took one play. Wesley Hall took it uh, down the field. The extra point was no good. 52-yard touchdown by Wesley Hall, who's had a great night. Four touchdowns, I believe, on the night. We'll find out here in a minute as Chuck gets set to, to give you the stats of the ball game. And in the third quarter, and put uh, the Raiders back on top of the ball game as the extra point was no good. And then Shelby Valley. Went back into the lead with 11.29 left in the fourth quarter. 58-yard drive, 11 plays. A one-yard run by Wyatt. And then uh, Zach Mullins with the extra point conversion. And the score was then 34-28. That's, uh, that's where it ended up. 34-28, Shelby Valley uh, with the big win here tonight. Looking pretty good as uh, the season gets underway. Some great individual performances tonight by running backs from both squads. Uh, first looking at uh, South Floyd as they lose another heartbreaker, this time here at home. Brandon Little had uh, 13 carries for 127 yards tonight. No touchdowns. Uh, Wesley Hall, the big touchdown man for South Floyd, 20 carries, 163, 163 yards and four scores tonight. And Joe Osborne, uh, the fullback, had 10 carries for 31 yards. So uh, South Floyd with right at 300 yards rushing tonight. Landon Hall, uh, one out of three for 11 yards passing for Shelby Valley. Joseph Wyatt had a heck of a night. He was the workhorse in the second half. Carried 21 times for 148 yards in the second half. Uh, ended up with 28 carries for 215 yards and four scores. So Wyatt, uh, really the man uh, that helps lead Shelby Valley to victory tonight. Zach Mullins had a nice game at fullback there for the Wildcats. Nine carries for 93 yards and a score. Jeremiah Dameron, three carries for 15 yards. Uh, Timmy Griffith didn't rush a whole lot, but when he did, he made them count, got them some first down, six carries for the quarterback, 53 yards on the ground. Griffith, uh, one out of four tonight for just five yards in the air and one interception. Turnovers, uh, Shelby Valley had two, South Floyd had one, and Bo, this ball game a lot more entertaining than uh, some we've seen early in the season. Some we've seen, that's right. Uh, Congratulations to Shelby Valley. Another big win here tonight as they uh, went over Phelps in the uh, Pike County Bowl last week. They win big over the Phelps Hornets and uh, barely pull one out here tonight against a very tough, uh, quick, scrappy South Floyd team that we'll be hearing a lot about as the season progresses. Uh, kind of a shootout here tonight, so to speak. A very close ball game, nip and tuck. It was a 10-point game, as we mentioned, at halftime with Shelby Valley down, but they came out. Scored a couple of times in the third quarter and got themselves in the lead. Shelby Valley uh, on top there and South Florida coming right back to get themselves in the lead. And then Shelby Valley with another touchdown. And that was it as uh, South Floyd had an opportunity. Plenty of time left in the game. Had a fourth down situation. Could not convert. 
and ended up on the short end here tonight. A little bit of a disappointment here in this game. I'm sure uh, Coach of uh, South Floyd was thinking there at the end of the ball game when he watched the time tick down. He was thinking, boy, if I, you know, waited to had a couple of those timeouts left. You know, they used a lot of timeouts early in the ball game, and that's what happens uh, when you have to use them early. You don't have them at the end of the game when you really need them, but it seemed like Shelby Valley with Wyatt and, uh, and Mullins uh, running the ball. Uh, Dameron at times, uh, South Floyd wasn't going to be able to stop them anyway there at the end of the ball game because they definitely had the momentum going. But uh, good game. I've really enjoyed it. I hope the fans, uh, those of you that uh, watch the ball game, uh, as we called it here, a tape delayed as it's replayed on the air. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I certainly have had a good time here tonight. Uh, last week's game's uh, not the greatest. This was uh, a classic, really. So uh, I guess that's going to take care of it here for us, this crew here at South Floyd. Couldn't ask for a better game to, to kick off the inaugural Shorty Jamerson Gridiron Classic down here. And as always, a pleasure working with you and Dr. Donbo. Had a good time, Chuck, uh, uh, tonight here in this game, and I enjoy working with you, partner. And uh, so for myself, Bo Daniels, Chuck Scoville, have camera, will travel. We'll get him off the roof here tonight. We'll say good night from South Floyd. Okay, for you, check out the last five times.